manufacturing has always been the driver of wisdom and development for a nation. Made in China is a mark that can be seen around the world. From men's suits to high-speed trains, from microchips to the Beidou navigation satellite system. Every part of our life today is closely connected to manufacturing. But the processes of manufacturing are becoming more challenging. Production lines are being revolutionized by a new wave of industrial technologies. Manufacturing will never be the same again. China's long coastline boasts countless ports. Seven out of the world's ten biggest ports are in China. Year, they see up to 160 million tons of goods leave for the outside world round the clock. Since the start of 2013, China has been the world's largest exporter for four years in a row. Its manufacturing power has long been something of legend. But this is just the beginning. As China is constantly upgrading its transport team to complete the huge maritime freight transport. Today, another of the world's mega container ships is under construction at this Chinese shipyard. At 399 meters long, it is even 10 meters longer than Chinese aircraft carrier Liaoning. When fully loaded, it can sail for 40 days uninterrupted. A true leviathan of the seas. This is the first time a container ship of this size with a capacity of 20,000 standard containers has been built in China. For engineers, precision is the greatest challenge in building this giant. They must work in all areas to a margin of error of less than 5 millimeters. Ensuring this precision starts with the cutting of the plates. Forty-two thousand tons of steel plate is transported to a workshop in batches. A plasma cutter then cuts the plates in exact accordance. With the design drawings to within a single millimeter. The heart of this shipyard is this giant dock the size of seven football fields. The dock is the yard's most valuable resource, so efficiency dictates that each vessel should occupy it for the shortest possible time. To speed the building process, the various sections of the ship are put together in modules from the main dock. The original design of the ship splits it into 399 units of modules which can be assembled separately and simultaneously at various sites around the yard. These are then brought together for final assembly in the dock. This mode of construction has greatly improved the shipbuilding speed. Although broken down into 399 modules, each weighs many dozens of tons. And moving them around is not easy. Today, one of the largest modules, the bridge and superstructure, is ready to be hoisted into position. It weighs over 600 tons. It will be lifted by two huge gantry cranes that themselves weigh one 200 tons in total. The real difficulty is not in the lifting, but how to install it on deck to the nearest millimeter. It requires the precise coordination of dozens of skilled workers. The 
The cranes get the bridge in place when suddenly a strong wind gets up. The wind is a little strong. Now a lot of equipment is swaying. We can't lower it now. Even a 1,200-ton crane system can't hold a 600-ton bridge steady in the Forge 8 gale. It is decided to delay the operation for the precision. Wait for them to move the equipment a little bit. Now it's basically stopped. Fix it here then. After a couple of hours, the wind drops. The welder sees the opportunity to make quick work of marrying the superstructure to the hull. And as ever, precision is the watchword. At the same time, in the hull, another group of engineers are conducting a test. A standard container-sized test frame is lowered down into the vessel. In the future, there will be up to 20,000 containers on board, each of which needs to have precisely marked location. We have placed the containers at the predetermined mock-up points to gauge the dimensions of this storage chamber, of this hold. We have to make sure each container can be lowered off smoothly. The margin of error has to be within three millimeters. When the ship is operational, a huge number of containers will be loaded and each must be placed at a precise location. In a few months' time, the giant will plow across the oceans, loaded with the treasures and trinkets, affordable goods that have benefited people from Atlanta to Zanzibar. While China is providing all manner of goods to the world, it is also importing products it needs. In particular, microchips, on which China spends more than $230 billion a year. Even more than it spends on petroleum. In fact, it's China's largest import. In 2016, China produced more than 1.2 billion smartphones and became the world's largest producer and consumer of mobile phones. But the crucial chips on which the phones run all have to be imported. This situation may not last forever. Zhen Gang is leading his team working on an important project to develop the next generation of 5G microprocessors. Its data speed will be 10 times faster than that of the fastest 4G chips. And the big plan is to get this to work on a chip of just under 0.49 square centimeter. Our 5G chip may involve 1 to 10 billion transistors. What does that mean? If we liken a transistor to the likeness of a person, the number of transistors in a 5G chip should be about the number of people on the Earth. It would be very complicated to organize the entire population on Earth to work together properly on a task. Chen Gang's group uses a device costing more than 1 million yuan to conduct a crucial experiment. You can think of it as a magnified 5G chip. Before we design a chip, we need to verify if it is correct. So we need this platform which can precisely simulate our design. We can simulate all the behavior of the chip. Only after this verification will we put the design into production. At that time, the chip will become very, very small. 
The design is about to be tested, and the engineers are preparing for it. To lay out billions of transistors on a 0.49 square centimeters chip, the engineers need to have extraordinary imaginations. It's like building an extremely complicated super city in a micro world. In the design process, we're going to get all these transistors in the right places. We have to connect the transistors and functional modules together through nodes. It's like the data package for a high definition movie downloaded from a simulation base station. The operation needs to be completed in just a few seconds. This places high demands on the design. The final design will allow the future 5G chips to support their greatly increased data transmission and processing speeds. Now China's chip manufacturers are looking for breakthroughs in many fields, including core chips that support high-speed railway operations and IGBT, insulated gate bipolar transistors. Many intelligent terminals have begun to make great progress. In the future, the 5G chip developed by Zhengang's group will appear in the new generation of smartphones. A new 5G era of Internet of Things is coming. Like chips, another industry with potential is aviation. skies above China will only get busier. There are currently nearly 3,000 aircraft flying more than 1.33 million passengers every day. Few people have realized that many parts of the planes are made in China. China has become an important part of the global industrial chain of aircraft. enough. The expansion of China's internal aviation market over the next 20 years will see the number of civil aircraft needed rise to over 6,000. The huge market has prompted Chinese engineers to design and build homemade aircraft. The C919 will be the future main model of air transportation. It takes more than 1 million components to build a C919, and each must be made in the highest standard demanded by the world aviation industry. Today, flight assembly engineer Zhou Qiwei will take us into the C919's most complex system for the first time. Now, we are in the airplane's cockpit, right beneath the captain and the co-pilot. Is an electronic cabin, it is one of the most densely equipped places. In terms of wiring cables and around 200 different pairs of plugs and sockets, it also has the highest density of wiring cables on the plane. With the rapid progress in modern aircraft, mechanical control systems are replaced by electronic ones. This creates an intensive network of sensors and controls that works like a body's neural system. The C919 has over 10,000 wires with cumulative length of nearly 80 kilometers. Each one accurately controls the operation of the various sensors. But unlike other processing, these wires need to be carefully installed one at a time by experienced engineers. It's a bit like heart surgery and like operations on a human body. The operation of this complex surgery is conducted by a team of highly skilled engineers. No mistakes can be allowed. How can I guarantee? These lines are in exact accordance with the drawings. 
Each of the connections has a unique number. No two points share the same identifier on the blueprint. If I have finished this point, I'll check on the electronic list. It shows this point is finished. When I review my work, I don't trace the wires or connectors themselves. I check on my list. I look for unchecked items and go to recheck the item itself. Computers and meticulous management are helping engineers complete the complex operation efficiently and reliably. At the Aircraft Test Engineering Institute, 30 kilometers away, another and altogether more dramatic test on the C919 is being prepared. After 30 minutes, the test will be of a simulated catastrophic failure in the C919's flight control system. This test is conducted in a Chinese-built flight simulator called the Iron Bird. All the control systems are identical to that of the real aircraft. Zhao Jingzhou, Deputy Chief Designer of C919. For the past few years, he's been working on the aircraft's core flight control system. This amounts to the most sensitive and confidential data held by any manufacturer. Are the systems all switched on? Okay, then you will be the co-pilot. The cockpit is ready. Let's start the test. Pull up. The simulated scenario is a high altitude failure of an aileron on one wing due to sudden icing. It will cause a dangerous destabilization of the aircraft's flight altitude. If the flight control system cannot correct the flight posture in time, a catastrophic accident could follow. Report the altitude of the plane. It's 4,500 feet, 178 knots. We are adjusting the settings. The flight control system is a very important system. A lot of foreign technology within these systems are not available to us. So, as the main manufacturer, we have to master this technology on our own. A failure has been set up. One aileron is locked to an angle of 15 degrees by the computer system. The plane has begun to roll. The plane starts to roll. Right now, it's beginning to correct itself. Feel the movement of the control stick as the plane levels off. No one would risk conducting a test like this in the air. Yet with the Iron Bird, the engineers can test the plane to the limits above its parameters. It's all going well. extensive testing in the Iron Bird, the C919's flight control system achieves a faultless level performance on its first real test flight. In the future, the C919 will appear in the international market as an important role in air transport. For China, it is not only passengers who benefit. Its development also benefits up to 22 provinces and cities and nearly 200 enterprises and 200,000 skilled workers. Many industries will see a series of technological changes and innovation driven by the C919 project. It has just taken 30 years for China to transform from an industrial backwater to the world's largest manufacturer. But manufacturing demands energy. By 2016, China consumes nearly 6 trillion kilowatt hours of electricity every year. To provide this by thermal power plants alone, it will put a huge pressure on the environment. Today, for China's industry, reduction of carbon emissions is a key goal. And the first step is to choose more clean and environmental friendly energy. Nuclear power is one way to achieve this. While 
keeping the lights on. Though nuclear power has zero carbon emissions, it does have other major safety issues. The engineers building China's new nuclear power stations must ensure safety cannot be compromised. Nuclear fission produces great energy. This energy is converted to electricity through steam turbines. But the fission reaction must be controlled within a safe range. So, we have built a fail-safe machine. In Shanghai, this factory covering 10,000 square meters is making the latest generation of nuclear power units by the highest safety standards in the world. The plant can build the equipment to fit out six nuclear power plants per year. And if they are all in operation, annual coal consumption will be reduced by at least 13.8 million tons. In a special workshop at the plant, the key parts of nuclear power units are being assembled. A specialized metal tube will be inserted into the giant evaporator. Nuclear fission produces energy which heats demineralized water in the reactor. This heated water flows through pipes in the evaporator to transfer the heat energy to water on the outside of the pipes. This water then evaporates and the steam produced drives the turbines to generate electricity. In this process of heat exchange, no contact can be allowed between the radioactive water heated by the fission reaction and non-radioactive water which drives the turbines. These nickel-based alloy tubes are at the heart of this. The 1.01 millimeter thick cubes must have complete resistance to stress corrosion and cracking in a radioactive environment. They are the crucial components in a nuclear power unit. Their assembly is very demanding of the installation environment the workshop must maintain a 100% clean atmospheric environment and a constant even temperature 24 hours a day. CAP 1400 steam generator is the world's largest steam generator. This is a very critical process in manufacturing. CAP 1400 steam generator, the installation of U-tubes. The lower body of a steam generator is about 13 meters tall. Tubes need to be installed from one end to the other very smoothly. This needs to be done accurately to a fraction of a hair's breadth, so it's extremely difficult to manufacture. To increase the efficiency of the heat exchange, the nickel-based alloy tubes need to be as thin as possible. The total length of the 12,500 1.01mm tubes is over 300 kilometers. Each tube has to be precisely manufactured and individually delivered to the site, where it is carefully installed in the evaporator. To build a completed evaporator takes 50 days. On the other side of the evaporator, the work of two technicians is even more critical. Both mouths of each of the nickel alloy tubes passing through the evaporator will be fitted into the pre-arranged slots. These are the only interfaces between the U-tubes and the external world. The task of the two workers is to weld the ends of the tubes onto the plates. The quality of the welding work will directly determine whether there will be leaks. The whole process is strictly controlled. The welding time is precisely calculated. Exactly 80 seconds for each weld. No variation is allowed. Nuclear will be key element in China's generation capacity in the future. At the same time, a wide range of projects are being undertaken China's manufacturing industry is developing fast to provide the diverse energy sources. The change also happened on the road.
In the last three decades, China has become the largest producer and consumer of automobiles in the world. The huge number of cars has also raised issues of energy consumption and pollution. Now this situation is changing. This assembly line may not seem much different from any other modern vehicle assembly lines anywhere in the world. But the difference there is not in the line itself, but in the vehicles being produced. They are all electric. Under the hood of our E6 pure electric driven car, you'll only find the subframe and an electric motor. In a traditionally fueled car, apart from subframe, there is the engine, gearbox, and many other components. So the assembly of pure electric-driven cars will have fewer processes compared to that of traditional cars. Making new energy vehicles is changing the traditional concepts of automobile manufacturing. High integration and modularization of components have become the trend. With its global lead in battery technology, the company has shifted its focus of its business to new energy vehicles and become a major supplier of electric buses, providing new energy vehicles for more than 200 cities in 48 countries. Besides batteries, another core component of new energy vehicles is becoming a battleground for global producers. really well. Dr. Taiwei knows now, this is a big moment for Chinese vehicle manufacturers. The uphill acceleration is also quite fast. From this point of view, the electric car performs better than a traditional car. Today, Taiwei and his engineering team are going to test how their independently developed motor performs on road. Here we accelerate fast. We can see the torque of the motor. This green line rises very fast. That is to say, the torque response of the motor is in very close alignment with specified torque of the vehicle. Dr. Tsai is organizing an experiment at the Beijing Electric Test Center. They're going to completely immerse their new electric motor design in water to test the whole system. This is crucial for the safety of all electric vehicles. It's different from traditional engines. If immersed in water, a traditional engine will break down, but it won't hurt people. An electric motor has a high voltage. Immersion of this might lead to a serious safety problem. Therefore, the whole electric motor system has to pass this immersion test. 14 years' experience of research and development in electric motors has made Dr. Tsai Wei one of the most influential members in the global motor industry. Now, the motor developed by Dr. Tsai is on the procurement list of the world's top auto companies and has put China at the leading edge of new energy vehicles. In Shanghai, Dr. Tsai's factory is busy working on producing the new generation of motors. This is a fully automated production line that produces an electric motor every three minutes. There are no workers to be seen. Traditional motors are mainly produced by hands or on semi-automated production lines. We developed this production line and we call it the Dark Factory because it can work even if lights are switched off. This solves the issue of inconsistent products. It ensures that hundreds of thousands of products that we make are exactly the same. An enlarged automated line is being built, assembly line is built. 
the future, it will make the factory motor capacity increase several times. New technological breakthroughs have made electric vehicles increasingly effective and practical. This is an opportunity, but also a challenge, not only in terms of production technology, but also the collective way of thinking. During the first stage of development in China's manufacturing industry, low labor costs and product prices provided China with its competitive edge in the global market. But now the global manufacturing industry is undergoing a major upgrading and transformation. In future manufacturing processes that are dull and repetitive will be handled by robots leaving humans to supervise or engage in more creative work. And one of the key assistants in helping us through this transformation are robots. Shenyang in northeast China is the center for robotic development. Here they design robots for a variety of different roles. They will beat the cutting edge of the production lines of the future. The robotics industry in China is expanding by 20% year on year. The traditional manufacturing model is being gradually overturned by a new technology. It can do a lot of things that man cannot do. It liberates human beings from work that people are not willing to do from dirty, tiring, dangerous and even boring work in industrial production. It's going to allow people to do more creative work to have more time and energy to improve things. A new production line comes into service. It's robots building robots. A master robot selects the designated parts on the shelf and transfers the parts to their correct positions on the flow line through automatic guided vehicles, AGV, The robot arms fetch and assemble the parts. The line can build several different types of robots with complete precision. The rapid development of the robot industry has given birth to more and more types of robots. Engineers in Shanghai are working on the development of the next generation. Yifan and his team is going to test the limits of their newly developed machine. Their new robot is going to carve an image on the shells of raw eggs. The eggshell is only 0.3 millimeters thick, while the surface of each egg is different. To engrave these irregular surfaces with a fast rotating cutting tool and avoid cracking the shell, the robotic arm must have precise control over its movement and have sophisticated spatial perception. The main difficulty in carving a complicated map on a small surface like on an eggshell is that it requires very precise control over positions. The eggshell is thin and crisp. Even a slight change in position or a slight change in force will destroy the structure of the entire eggshell. So the whole carving process requires very precise control over position and force. The key to this is this seven axis robot. traditional robots, this robot has seven intelligent controlled rotation axes, which maximize the working parameters of the robotic arm. Working with multiple dimensions gives increased flexibility. A new robotic era is on the way.
Mr. Lee prepares to start the engine of his red truck. Today he will hit the interstate highways with a load of dangerous liquid chemicals. A safe trip is paramount. To guarantee this, his cab is equipped with the Beidou Navigation Satellite System. In the Road Traffic Safety Control Center, his progress is being monitored. Through the Beidou System Transportation Department has a real-time dynamic supervision of goods vehicles loaded with dangerous chemicals. Once the vehicle has any abnormal behavior like exceeding speed limits or parking illegally, or especially when the truck deviates from a predetermined route, we will notice immediately and take appropriate actions to stop it. With the help of the Beidou system, China is able to maintain end-to-end -end monitoring on the movement of dangerous goods. Our modern world has become reliant on global positioning satellites for almost every activity. Numerous global terminal devices are enjoying the services provided by satellite navigation. China is planning on expanding Beidou. With another 35 satellites over the next two decades to build a huge navigation system, third satellite in the system is about to enter the final test before launch. The satellite is pushed gently into the thermal vacuum chamber. It will undergo extreme temperature difference from 210 degrees Celsius to minus 180 degrees Celsius in a near vacuum state. It will operate in geostationary orbit 20,000 kilometers above the Earth. The extreme environment in the universe will be the most challenging test for every component. of the Beidou system is continually increasing. In the near future, no matter where you are, day or night, as long as you look up at the sky, the satellite 20,000 kilometers above can help you find the direction. At 10 o'clock in the evening, train driver Zhang Sunyi appeared on time. Start the test. 4410293. 441293. Input correct. His mission today is to test a new high speed train. Anti skid test. In another couple of hours, it will take to the track for comprehensive testing. Emergency brake interface. Air brake is available. Starting test is over. The train is part of a new series of high-speed trains called Fuxing Hao, which literally means rejuvenation. Zhang will test the train in speed of up to 350 kilometers per hour to verify the running conditions of the whole system. Launch confirmed. There are 30 engineers on the train to monitor the test.
In 45 days, China's high-speed rail will see a historical moment. These new series of high-speed trains will take to the tracks for real at 350 kilometers per hour as the world's fastest. Journey time from Shanghai to Beijing will be cut to four and a half hours. As the series roll out across the whole network, China will usher in a new high-speed era. Changchun, 1,500 kilometers away in the northeast China, the birthplace of China's heavy industry. A new factory has been commissioned. The first batch of the Fuxing series is being assembled. They are wider, taller, and longer than the previous generation of high-speed train, but their energy consumption is 15% lower. The trains will adopt new standards. Trains of the same type produced by other factories will all be compatible with each other. Even their components are compatible, which will help reduce running costs, At midnight, workers begin to install base plate bogies on number 5010 locomotive. It is the last element in the general assembly process. Base plate bogie is a core part that supports the carriages and outputs power. The bogey is a new engineering design with a power output of 10,140 kilowatts. It has been tested over 600,000 kilometers each year for the last three years and has undergone 12 million fatigue tests. The bogey is about to be installed. It is pushed by two workers and glides easily under the locomotive. Its positioning is determined by four pins, which are carefully married to the positioning hole. Is that it? At 1 a.m., all the installation work was successfully completed. The locomotive will travel between cities at 350 kilometers per hour in the near future. China has the world's most complex natural environment. The new trains will face extreme cold, heat, and sandstorms. Therefore, it must provide more solutions to adapt to different regions. It is in this environment that China's high-speed railway was born. China has 60% of the world's high-speed track, which has witnessed 5 billion kilometers of safe travel and carried more than 7 billion passengers with higher efficiency, longer service life, and higher energy efficiency, China's high-speed rail is starting to become a new standard for high-speed railway in the world. to the most traditional Chinese manufacturing industry, everything looks the same at a distance. The skilled workers, exquisite fabrics, and traditional mechanical equipment. But in fact, the manufacturing here has been completely different. Liu Yili left her job with the world top 500 company to come and work here two years ago. Now she's in love with the most traditional manufacturing industry, Today, we can make personalized products by line production based on data. 400 years ago, human invented weaving machines. 
automation reduced the cost of textile production, and the industrial civilization began. After Henry Ford invented the assembly line, manufacturing became even more efficient. Tens of thousands of products can be produced quickly and uniformly. It once again reduced the cost and manufacturing difficulty, but such goods also became the same. Today, things are changing back again. Each outfit produced in this factory is tailored to an individual customer. Data is what drives this. Every order goes into the computer system from the internet. And the system generates it as an independent code. This code will guide workers on the production line. Although the 300 production steps are the same, the codes direct the machinists to different materials and production methods. And this code can clearly tell workers how to operate. On a production line, we can produce thousands of different products, such as men's clothing, women's clothing, children's clothing. We can do all of these on a single production line. Years ago, the clothes turned out on this line were mass-produced. But with the network and accumulated data for more than a decade, the company can produce clothes individually customized and tailored to each client around the world. Each order will be turned around in a week. Inventory stock is the thing of the past. Everything has changed. A new way of manufacturing is coming. More and more devices are connected to the internet. It makes manufacturing more and more different. Now China's manufacturing is undergoing a revolution. From high speed to high quality. From OEM to self-innovation. From simple repetition to intelligent manufacturing, these changes will surely benefit the world and will reinterpret the true meaning of made in China.